Hi everyone, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. A common question that is often asked amongst pre primary parents is how do you teach science to a three year old? Now, what happens is when we think of pre primary, most people are simply thinking about the alphabet, they are thinking about reading and writing. So, science is not even on their horizon. So, I find this a very intelligent question. And today I am going to answer it. And of course, if you have any doubts at the end of this, you need to ask me what your doubts are. So, let me start by saying that science is all around us. We live in a world that is about science. Physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, environmental science, natural science, animal science, it is all around us. So, the child when he or she is born is surrounded by science. This is the first thing to remember. So, we must not make science out to be a, a hard subject, something that small children cannot do. We need to get this uh, idea out of our heads. Children are naturally curious. That means, they are already little scientists because the most important quality of a scientist is curiosity, is not it? So, what do you find in little children when they are very, very young, not even three, you find them putting a lot of things into their mouth and that is essentially because the mouth is full of ready to recognize cells whereas the rest of the body is still developing. So, they are very sensitive, the mouth is sensitive to knowing. So, the child is a person who comes into the world to know things, naturally will experiment, will break open things, will open things and check it out, often break them and then we get very upset with the child. But if you think about it, it is experimentation, that is what the child is doing, he is experimenting to see what happens if you do something. So, that is it. You give the child needs to look at a whole bunch of textures. So, whether it is in cloth or wood or glass, metal, all of these are part of the child's world and you will find that they lick everything basically to know what it is. And those cells in the tongue tell them that they are different. Now, we can offer these not for licking, but for feeling but for experimenting and a whole bunch of different things that are there in these books. The magic box 3 plus, 4 plus and 5 plus environment, culture and science. I have got a whole book that I have used in the syllabus for just science, culture and environment. So, as part of play you will find that children experiment. They are experiments, we do not think they are experiments, but they are. Right. Next, the child wants to know how the world works. So, anything, the child finds a, a lever, he or she is going to pull it down, finds a wheel, they are going to spin and check it out. So, they, we often keep an eye on children because we are afraid that they will get into some danger and this comes from their need to constantly experiment. They observe things very closely. So, the child will observe the moon and the fact that it is going and it is gone and it is becoming half and quarter. They will play with a compass, a magnet, a telescope. All these are play things. They are fascinated that certain things happen when you put things together, for example. Children love to watch, play with ice, for example, or water play. They are, you know, they just love sand. So, these are some of the textures and materials that children experiment with. So, they love observation. Children love to build structures. So, they are great builders. That is why toys have got building blocks. So, whatever it is, now why should it be building blocks? If you want to follow the NEP and STEM, which is in plenty in these books, you need to start giving them different things to balance, to put not just blocks but you can balance a whole bunch of various items to find out whether they will stand or whether they will fall. So, that is one. 
and then you will find that children love to play. Now play is the biggest one. You look at their toys. Their toys are full of science. What is that but not science, those toys? So you tell me. So let me give you some, some examples. So the toys that are built around science like wind toys, all the toys that work on the wind, mechanical toys, um, water guns, ball games, balloons, straws, kites, spinning tops, all of it is science. Every one of them is science. So there you go. So the toys are full of science. And as I said, water, sand, sticks, stones, everything is part of the child's natural toys that the child finds. You don't need to have expensive toys, they'll find simple things and make it into a toy. All games that children play are based on science, did you know? So when you run and jump and skip and you sing and you go to the playground and you play on the swings and the seesaws and the merry-go-round or the tarpaulin, all of those are science. You are looking at what are you doing when you are doing all those activities. You are looking at movement and momentum. You are looking at velocity. You are looking at speed. They may not know these terms and they don't need to know them yet. But what I am trying to tell you is the child is already immersed in science. We don't have to be in a hurry to give them labels. We need to be in a hurry to give them a lot of experiences that they enjoy. Children love animals. So animals and natural science is a huge part of the science that your children will do. The types of creatures that you find in the air and the water and, and on uh, land, these are the subjects of or content of your children's science as we know it. If you look at festivals, you will find light and sound and heat. All of which is also found in all the, all the uh, equipment that is there in your homes. So the fan and the uh, kitchen equipment that you find and the iron that gets hot and you say don't touch. So there is science everywhere. The kitchen is a huge laboratory. The bathroom is a laboratory. It's got soap and it's got water and it's got shampoo and it's got toothpaste and all of those can be used in ingenious ways to do chemistry and if you have these books you will find that I have put in so many experiments, simple experiments that children can uh, be involved in and learn that things change and things remain constant. The fridge in your kitchens where you freeze things and the microwaves and the stubs that melt things are all nothing but chemistry. Food is another big subject. Children love to eat, children love to taste food, children love cars. They love nature, the seasons, trees, bugs, landscapes, everything is a part. The children love mud, right? So they play in the mud and they find little creepy crawlies. All of this shows a massive involvement in science. When you visit the doctor or you visit a construction site or you take them to the beach or you watch the traffic police, control traffic, all of those are parts of science. So what we need to do is to give children a huge amount of wonderful experiences that they are going to thoroughly enjoy. What we have to do is to make sure that their curiosity is piqued that they ask a lot of questions, that they are then ready for the big school. So you don't have to teach them the scientific terms. What you need to basically do is to keep that curiosity and wonder in the child alive. And that way the child learns a lot and is prepared for later school where you really start doing science in earnest. So I hope I have answered the question on whether children should do science and how to get them to do science. All the answers are in the book and please buy a set. It's available on Amazon and it's also available on our website www.mindsprings.in. If you have any more questions, you must ask so that I can come to you and give you some more 
excellent tips to get your children to be the little scientists that they already are. So till we meet again, keep smiling.